I was telling you earlier about um, having notebooks and often having one and trying to always have one in my, in my pocket where I'm going because you never know when you're going to get an idea. This is typical of uh, the book. One of my sons gives me one every Christmas and it tends to last, I don't know, most of the year. And sometimes I get a top up one on my birthday. But it's just all kinds of notes, sketches, scenes from um, train windows, whatever. And if I get an idea, this is the character of um, a frog, super frog. Now, f when I was very small, when my first day at school, um, I didn't want to go into the school because my brothers that morning at breakfast had told me horror stories about going to school because the teachers whack you. And uh, so I wouldn't let go of my mother's coattail to go in the school. But a teacher came out, took me in the school, and I knew this teacher, her name is Miss West. I knew Miss West because she came into our shop every morning on her way to school to buy her cigarettes. She took me into the school and all the children were singing, all things bright and beautiful. I joined in. And Miss West was going around listening to all the new children to see if they could sing well enough to be in the choir. She tapped me on the shoulder and said, you sound like a frog, a frog at the bottom of a well. So I was disappointed by this, of course, but also immediately frogs became my most favorite creature in the whole world. If I sound like a frog, they must be really special. Now, what is special about the frogs? I found that what is special about frogs is that they can breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, and puff themselves up to be huge, like the Incredible Hulk, full of pent-up energy. So I did this story about Super Frog. And when he's cross, he just lets all that pent-up energy out of his bum, boom! So he becomes jet-propelled like a real superhero. And that goes back to Miss West saying, I sound like a frog. And this is his first appearance in this little notebook. Little frog, big frog and then the story begins to happen around him. And that's where really they all begin. Drawings of monsters, little story, bits and bobs, pieces, things of sketchbooks. This book, this, this boat eventually ended up in a Michael Morpurgo story. And so you never know when these things are going to be useful. It's like a, a recipe book. And often these ideas lay around waiting for the missing ingredient, which could suddenly pop up at any moment from anywhere. So it's another book being planned. It's called Fish and I at this moment. It ended up being called Friends. It's a story about our cat and my mother-in-law's goldfish and the most unlikely friendship. And I've done that several, several times, having really, really unlikely friendships because it's another hit, really, this idea of conflict and that if a fish and a cat can be friends, certainly we can all be friends. And that's the cat taking the goldfish in his little bowl to an exhibition of paintings of fish and cats. and so on. Quite often use animals instead of people because it gets away from any kind of racial stereotype. It's a big fat man in a big fat car polluting a little boy on his tricycle. That ended up in a book called uh, Hello Mr. World about two children giving the world a health check and finding that uh, things aren't too good with him because he smokes too much. There's a little boy listening in to Mr. Wells lungs choked. How are you today Mr. Wells? Not good. And so on. Once the idea is kind of a little bit established I then go to draw it out full size and here we come to the drawings for stubby. I usually work with a pencil on tracing paper. And I can cut up bits and pieces to make different compositions until I'm happy with it. This is the, the soldiers boarding the boat. Now I'll photocopy these sketches 
and start to add the text. And it becomes a kind of patchwork, really, making additional little sketches, making the text shorter or longer, according to how the book begins to work out. Double page spreads, single pages, so it doesn't get monotonous. Sprinkling of all kinds. And it's usually at this stage I will show the idea to a publisher so they can visualise the pictures and the story. And I will have done one or two colour pieces so they can see the kind of, kind of colour that um, I'll be using. Um, if there's a variety of colour, say a night shot and a, and a daytime one, I'll do one of each. And then they can begin to think about whether they want to publish this book or not. And then once given the go ahead, I will go back and do all the finished artwork. But it all starts with a little idea in a pocketbook.